Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Death toll rises in Sudan's anti-coup protests. Two civilians killed in Hyderpura encounter in Kashmir. Kekchi people face increasing attacks in Guatemala. United Kingdom introduces bill allowing removal of citizenship without notice. Now, first story. At least 15 people were killed after Sudan's coup forces attacked a march of the millions on November 17th. The toll is expected to rise given that a total communication blackout has delayed reports. The Central Committee of Sudan Doctors has reported casualties from Bari, Omdurman and Khartoum. It also reported that security forces had attempted to raid and besiege several hospitals. Tear gas was fired into the Wad hospital injuring patients and medical staff. These reports followed days after similar violence on November 13th killed at least eight people. Doctors reported evidence of people being shot with expanding bullets. These flatten on impact causing severe damage and their use is considered a war crime under the Rome Statute. Medical staff in several hospitals held demonstrations on November 15th against the atrocities committed by security forces. Sudan's resistance committees have been organizing protests against the October 25th military coup. Hundreds have been injured and the death toll is at least 40. Security forces fired live rounds and tear gas as thousands took to the streets again on Wednesday. According to the doctors' committee, most suffered gunshots to the head, neck and torso. The Sudanese Professionals Association has accused security forces of premeditated killings. Protesters are mobilizing under the slogan, No Negotiations, No Compromise, No Partnership in Crime. The demand is for a complete civilian government. Security forces fired tear gas again on Thursday as several people protested in Khartoum. In our next story, we go to India where outrage has grown following the killing of two civilians in a shootout in Kashmir. The firing took place in the capital of Srinagar on November 15th. Police, paramilitary and armed forces surrounded a shopping complex where militants were suspected to be present. Four people were killed in the subsequent shooting, two of whom were suspected militants. The other two people killed were a shop owner, Mohammad Altaf Bhatt and Dr. Madasir Gul, who was a dental surgeon with a land brokerage office. Police claimed that Bhatt was killed in crossfire and Gul was working with the militants. Their families have vehemently denied these claims. Eyewitnesses also told News Click that Bhatt and Gul were used as human shields by security forces. Both their families have been protesting for days demanding that their bodies be returned so that their last rites can be performed. All four people killed were buried by security forces in northern Kashmir on November 16th. Their families held a sit-in protest in Srinagar's press colony on November 17th, which continued into the night. Journalist Shahid Tantre reported that the electricity supply to the area had been cut off and people were using car headlights. Police then arrived on the scene and Bhatt and Gul's family members were violently detained. As per local reports, they were released early on Thursday morning. Police reportedly told a family member that the bodies would be released on Friday. Meanwhile, the family of one of the men suspected of being a militant, Amir Migre, has also denied these allegations and has stated that he was a labourer. The Jammu and Kashmir government has ordered a magisterial inquiry into the killings. Next, we go to Guatemala's El Estor municipality, where indigenous communities are facing growing attacks by security forces. 96 Kekchi families were violently evicted from a farm on November 17th. Footage on social media shows their houses burning as members of the National Civil Police stood around. The government spokesperson later claimed that the eviction had been ordered by a judge and the family's rights had been respected. The events on Wednesday took place as Alastor is placed under a state of siege. The Kekchi people held a weeks-long protest against the Phoenix nickel mine. 
they have stated that the mine has contained the air and the water in Lake Isabel. The KXG people held a weeks-long protest against the Phoenix Nickel Mine. They have stated that the mine has contaminated the air and water in Lake Isabel. They have also argued for years that they were not consulted about the mining operations in their area. This was upheld by the Constitutional Court in 2019, which also issued an injunction order on the mine pending consultation. However, while the Ministry of Energy and Mines did hold roundtables, the KXG people and small fishermen were excluded. Moreover, operations at the Phoenix mine continued illegally. On October 4th, the KXG people set up a blockade to prevent coal-carrying trucks from leaving the mine. On October 22nd, security forces descended on the area and fired tear gas at the protesters. A 30-day siege was imposed two days later. As reported by Mongabe, over 40 raids and 60 arrests have been carried out in the area since then. And finally, we go to the United Kingdom, where a new rule will authorize the government to revoke a British person's citizenship without prior notice. Clause 9 titled Notice of Decision to Deprive a Person of Citizenship was added to the Nationality and Borders Bill this month. The change was first reported by The Guardian on November 17th. The clause exempts the government from giving notice if it is not quote-unquote reasonably practical to do so. It also allows exemptions in cases of national security, diplomatic relations or quote-unquote otherwise in public interest. The UK has extended powers to strip British-born and naturalised citizens of their nationality rights since 2002. According to official figures, the citizenship of 172 people was revoked between 2010 and 2018. Other provisions of the Nationality and Borders Bill are similarly dangerous. The bill criminalises anyone who arrives in the UK by an illegal route. It goes further to criminalize anyone seeking to save their lives. Another cruel provision grants Border Force staff immunity if people die in the English Channel during pushbacks of migrant boats out of British waters. The precarity of British citizenship rights was highlighted following the case of Shamima Begum. She had fled to the Islamic State in Syria when she was just 15 years old. Her citizenship was cancelled in 2019 and the Supreme Court then barred her from returning to the UK to fight her case. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.